Hey, good afternoon, a good night of Shabbos to all. Getting ready for Shabbos here, the favorite time of the week. It's something that I love and treasure so dearly. <clears throat> to be able to spend a little time with you before Shabbos with the short of our Torah is the best. Shabbos is a time that allows us to <clears throat> embrace that which God has given us, that which we have control of, that which is nearest and dearest to us, our family, and to tune out of the world. What better week than this week to shut your radio, shut your TV, shut your phone, and focus on the gift of Shabbat that God has given us. L'chaim, God bless you, Shabbat Shalom. I wanted to tell you, that's delicious tequila. I wanted to tell you, Odvar Torah, in this week's Torah portion, we read about the inaugural choosing of Moses as the leader of the Jewish people at the burning bush. The story of the burning bush, which I spoke about today, uh, this week, a fascinating, remarkable story where the bush is burning, burning and Moses comes close and God tells him, take off your shoes, the place you're on is holy. And then God tells him, you are the leader, go take the Jewish people out of Egypt. But the question is, why did God choose Moses? And the Midrash tells us a fascinating story. The Midrash tells us that Moses was a shepherd of the sheep of his father, Mojesro. And one day he had all the sheep and he was walking in the desert with them and he was taking them to pasture. And one of the little sheep ran away and Moshe started chasing the sheep, chasing the sheep for a while until the sheep came to a little river, to a little place of water and started drinking. And Moshe felt terrible. He realized that all the sheep wanted was not to run away, but it wanted some water. So he lifted it up, he gave him water, and he carried it all the way back. And the midrash said that Moses turned to the sheep and said, I feel so bad. If I only knew you were thirsty, I would have given you water. And God said, ah, look how Moses takes care of his sheep. You can imagine what kind of shepherd he'll be for the Jewish people. And all the commentaries asked the question, what's the big deal? What did Moses do that was so great? If you were a shepherd, didn't, wouldn't you have responsibility on all the sheep? And wouldn't you make sure that they all come back intact? That's your job. So of course Moses ran after the sheep. He had to make sure that it would come back. So what's the big deal? And in a revolutionary thought that exemplifies what the Rebbe was and who he was, the Rebbe tells us something remarkable. The Rebbe says Moses was chosen as, as the, chosen as the Jewish leader not because of what he did, but of what he learned. What does that mean? That's why the Midrash emphasizes not just that he took the sheep back, but that he picked it up and he said that if I would have known that you were only thirsty and looking for water, I would have given you. What Moses realized was sometimes you have a sheep, you have a child, you have a student that runs away, that breaks away, that acts irrational, that does things that are not becoming for them, that doesn't behave the way they should. And you get angry, you get upset. Why are they doing that? You want to punish them. But what the Torah is telling us is that not every child that rebels is looking to revolt. What does that mean? That sometimes you have a student in school, you're teaching, and your student interrupts you. Not necessarily is he interrupting because he wants to interrupt you, but maybe he's interrupting you because he can't concentrate. Maybe there's pain at home, his parents are going through a divorce, there's a struggle. Maybe he has issues, there's no money at home, they don't have food, the house is cold. What Moshe Rabbeinu saw when he ran after that sheep was he was taught a lesson. The sheep wasn't running to get away, but it was running because it was thirsty. It needed something. Maybe it needs attention. Maybe it needs you to know that I'm here for you. But the moment you run after it and you care for it, you're able to help them with what they need. And that's what the Rebbe taught us in such a beautiful way. There was a... Um, a writer for the Haaretz magazine years ago, Haaretz newspaper in Israel, his name was Shlomo Shamir. And he finally had the opportunity once to go visit the Rebbe. He lived in New York and he came into the Rebbe. It was a cold, snowy winter. And he came into the Rebbe and he writes about it later. He writes how inspired he was by the Rebbe, the love. But he says, the Rebbe spoke to me about faith, not about needing to bring faith. The Rebbe spoke to me about the faith instilled in every Jew, not, oh, you have to get it. The Rebbe said, everyone has it. It's just we need to light their fire. The Rebbe said, why would a Jew live in Israel under such risk and challenge? If not that he had faith, if not that he had love. When we see someone, we have to see their whole picture. 
That's what the famous commentary says in, in Pirkei Avos. It says, Have a done as kal adam l'kav z'chuz. Judge everyone favorably. What does it mean kal adam, the whole person? The rabbis say, when you judge someone, don't just see their action. See the whole person. See the circumstances. See, see where they were brought up. See their upbringing. See their family. See their challenges. See their struggles. See the human being. See the human side of them. And that's what a true leader is. A true leader is someone who doesn't give up on his people. He recognizes that when they do something wrong, it's because something's bothering them. Something deep within them is crying out for help. And that's why when the Jews sin with the golden calf, Moses stands up for them. God says they're a stiff-necked nation. Moses uses that to their advantage. He says if they're stiff-necked, why are they stiff-necked? What have they been through? You need to forgive them. There's a remarkable story. There's a Chabad rabbi, Shlomo Kovesh. He's a rabbi in, in Budapest in Hungary. And he sits on the national board there, in the community. A remarkable man. And one day, he gets a call. And a lady is on the other line. She says, would you like to buy a newspaper? And he wonders to himself, I mean, would you like to buy um, a show? He says, who sells a show in the right mind? And especially in Budapest? He says, what are you talking about? He says, let me explain you. There's this beautiful building on the third street in the main center of Budapest that the king used to bring people to see as a historic place. And it was a show. And then the communist took it away from the Jewish people. And it became the head of a TV station. It became the main TV station. But now the TV station is folding. And there's an arc here. There's This is a show. We want to know if you want to buy it. It's really worth 2 million euros. But we'll give it to half a million euros. So Rabbi Koivish says, let me come see it. They take him to come see it. And he looks at it and he's devastated. There's no trace left of the show. It was taken away and ripped away from the Jews and turned in literally to a TV place. So he says, listen, I don't have money to buy it. Let me rent it meanwhile. And he put the ad, he put a story in the newspaper. Hopefully people will help him. One day he gets a call. And this guy from a 212 number from Manhattan, and right away he says, wow, this is maybe the miracle. Some uncle or some rich Jew wants to pay the half a million euros so he can buy this. No, it turns out to be a Jew who says, you know, I read the story. I want you to first of all to know I'm a bad Jew. So the rabbis are saying, well, how can it, you're not bad. He says, listen, I'm a bad Jew. So the rabbis doesn't argue with him. He says, listen, I haven't been in a show in 60 years. I don't go into any kosher places. But I was reading about the story you had, and it happens to be that I, this is the show of my, gra- of my parents. And I want to put up our yard side board for the people that passed away. He says, what do you mean you want to put up? He says, I'm an electrician. So the rabbi says, oh, here goes my miracle story. But then he finds out this guy's not just an electrician. He, he did the whole Kennedy Airport electri- electrical there. He's a very successful man. And he sets up a meeting for him to come see the show. The guy comes to the show and he says, first, I want to tell you the story about why I'm a bad man. He says, you know, I'm a bad man. Me and my sister were, were, were survivors of the Holocaust. We were orphans. Both of our parents died and we were left alone. And it was devastating. And one day, we're walking in the streets, and the rabbi sees us. And he says to us, wow, he knew our parties. This is, you, you're still here? Come, I want you to come to show. So with all the courage it took for an orphan, and not being, having the courage I needed, I got myself together, and I went to the show of Rosh Hashanah, and I knocked at the door. I opened the door, and the guard says to me, he says, do you have a ticket? He says, no, I don't have a ticket. So he slams the door. So I bang. I say, please, the rabbi personally invited me. The guard says, no ticket. He can't come in. He slams the door and I'm left on the outside. I was so hurt and I was so in pain that I made a commitment. I will never walk into a place that doesn't want me without a ticket. And since then, I have never stepped foot in a show for 60 years. But today, when I heard your story and the way you invited me, I came in. We never know the pain of a person. We never know why a person's hurting. But we have to know, like the Rebbe told Shlomo Shamir, that everyone has faith. Everyone has love. And all they need is for us to strike the match. So I want to say L'chaim as we go into Shabbos. It's been a painful week. We have to have tolerance. We have to have patience. We have to have love. We have to care for one another. 
There's so much good in people. We live in the best country. The kindest, caring, most caring people. God bless us all. Have a great Shabbos. Hug your family. Embrace them. Celebrate Shabbos together. And may God bless us all. Shabbat Shalom. L'chaim.